Hi, Ben here and welcome back to another Work in Progress Wednesday. It's been a busy week. We've had lots of different projects on. We've been catching up on some of the carving tools. We've finally got the carving tools back in stock on the website. And I've also been just busy getting things glued up, really. Got a big selection of knives glued up on the back bench there. They got glued up yesterday. So there'll be a few more days before I can actually start shaping those. But lots of antler, lots of really nice figured timbers. So yeah, it's an exciting time in the workshop, really. But when I started to get the carving tools underway, I suddenly thought, actually, maybe you guys maybe need a little tip, a few top tips on how to actually keep those tools razor sharp. So I've got my carving tools that are in sort of need of a little bit, bit of TLC. So I thought it'd be a good time to actually show you how I go about keeping those tools really nice and sharp. So this is my carving set that I took with me. You might have seen us on uh, Alan Titchmarsh a few weekends ago. Well, this is the kit that I took with me. The only thing that's not in there is my big woodlander that I used as well. But I've got a nice three inch sloyd with a contoured handle. That's in there, that's my sort of sort of more detailed knife really. And then I've got a hybrid hook, that's a medium. And then I've got my left and right standard crooks really. You can tell they're left and right because obviously they got an R and they got an L on the end of them. So I know which is which basically. But uh, I keep them wrapped up in the pig skin and keep them in my tool roll with a pencil. Nomad sometimes lives in there. And I normally just have a few bits and pieces. I've even got my template look for, for making spoons in there. So really handy to keep everything all together. And then as long as you carry in your carving kit, it's probably a good idea to keep some means of sharpening it. So these are our pretty simple, pretty lightweight carving tool sharpening sets. So in the set, you have one that's got a bit of wet and dry sandpaper wrapped around it. And then one that's got this pigskin with some honing paste on there basically. Now, a lot of the time with sharpening, unless you've hit some really dry, tough wood, you'll probably find that as soon as you feel that it's just lost that real keen, sort of razor sharp edge, you can sometimes just bring that back purely by just stropping. So you often don't even need to go to the sandpaper so long as you catch it soon enough. So almost, if you find that the tool's just starting to tear the grain a little bit, or it's not giving you the fine finish on your spoon that you want, I'd just stop for a few minutes and literally just strop it on the on the one carving tool sharpening kit that's got that, that honing paste on really. What I wanted to show you is, obviously these come razor sharp ready to go, straight out the box, so you shouldn't need to sharpen them when you get them, but I'm just gonna give this one a little bit of TLC. It's not massively blunt at all. I can still feel it's got some bite, but the sort of main areas where it really gets a lot of use, which is this curve, this section here, this is the one that really takes the punishment. So this is probably where it's the least sharp, really. So when you've got a tool that's still very shiny like that, it's often very difficult to see where you're removing material. So if you haven't got any kind of oxidization on the actual steel itself, it's not a bad idea just to get a marker pen and just color in that bevel. That's gonna sort of show you where you're hitting the material. And again, Assess the edge. So this hardly needs anything doing to it. So don't start with the very coarse piece of paper. This is the very finest. This is 1,200 grit paper on this piece of board. The coarsest paper that's included in the kit is 240. So that's great for heavy stock removal or if you've got a big sort of nick in your crook knife. So now that we've got that penned in, the main thing to think about is you've got these flat sides to the carving tool kit and then a radius edge. The radius edge is so that you can get inside and then the flat surface is for all flat bevels. So whether it's doing the flat bevels on your crook knives or whether you're even using it for sharpening your straight knives as well. So what we can do, I find that it helps if you just lift it off the bench ever so slightly by putting it on a piece of scrap wood. And then what I'm gonna do is use that flat side and I'm gonna start drawing the sharpener away from the cutting edge and see where I start to remove that pen from. So I wanna try and remove it pretty much all in one go. See how it's removed all that pen from that section of bevel. If I was only removing it from the rear or the, the very back edge of the bevel, like so, I'm sort of demonstrating it there, it's only removing it from there. That means you're holding it too sort of, sort of too flat. So you need to increase that angle. So this wrist is the thing that controls the pitch of the carving sharpener basically so we're going to start drawing that watching where it's hitting the steel 
watching where it's removing the pen. And you can pretty much, depending on the size of the block or piece of wood, you can pretty much get all the way around the curve to about here. Then what I find is that it's easier just to flip that carving tool round and now I can push so I can get this section of the bevel now. So keep an eye on that pen, making sure that I'm removing all that pen as much as I can. So it's got that section and then we can change our pitch a little bit. It's quite good having good light source. So I'm right next to our big open sort of double doors on our workshop. But if you're in a dark workshop, I would say get a nice angle poise lamp or something like that. So that's pretty much removed all that pen. There's a little bit of pen left there where it's slightly hollow ground at that section, but that'll come out with, with time. But making sure that we're removing all the pen from the back of the bevel and the front of the bevel. Now, obviously if we increase that angle too much and just remove lots of material from that front edge of the bevel, it would make it sharp very quickly, but after, after a few attempts, you'd end up with a very obtuse bevel. So we're trying to maintain that edge geometry so that it cuts sweetly. We want it to be a nice sort of gentle, ever so slight radius so that it slides through that shape of that spoon. Now what we've done now, now that we've removed material from that outside bevel, we now need to remove the burr. This is where some people get sort of confused really. It's a single bevel tool. It's only got a bevel on the outside of the hook knife but you still need to think that this flat inside face is still a bevel. So you've sharpened that side, some people then just forget the rest of it, but it's important that we remove any burr and also polish that inside edge. So this is where we go back to our, down to our sort of block of wood again. And now we can use that radius edge of the sandpaper and we can get in there. If you want to, you can color this bevel in as well, but this we wanna try and maintain as flat as possible. Now the only slight disadvantage of using sandpaper versus a stone is that I can't draw the tool backwards, otherwise it will just cut that paper. So make sure that you just lift off on that upstroke, on that return stroke, and I can rotate it, and I can get right round that curve, right round to the tip of the tool without too much effort. Just like so. So like I say, if you got a lot of damage or you'd got a very dull section or you'd left this in a damp environment and you've got any kind of corrosion or tarnish on that inside edge, you might need to spend a little bit longer polishing that side, but that's pretty good. And then what I do is just gently and very lightly just remove any sort of significant burr just by repeating that process on that outside bevel. So like I say, you might not even need to get to the paper. You can pretty much do all your maintenance work, probably with the strop. That would be sharp now, but it will probably leave a very microscopic burr on there. So to get that ultimate polish on there, we're gonna repeat the same process with the, the strop, the leather with the honing compound on there. I've actually put on some Tormek paste. I really like Tormek paste. It seems to be like the perfect kind of grittiness that will leave a very sort of highly polished edge, but not so sort of smooth that it hasn't got any bite left to the tool. It seems to just be the perfect combination of polish and a bit of uh, bitey edge to it. So again, just like the sandpaper, make sure that you push away from the cutting edge. Don't pull it back into the cutting edge, otherwise you're just gonna blunt in it. And I'm putting a fair amount of force on at this stage. It's only when you get to, through to the latter stages that you wanna ease off the pressure. So lift that over again. I'm gonna polish that inside face of the crook knife. Obviously this is a right-handed one. It's exactly the same technique, but just in reverse for doing a left-handed crook. And I'll just repeat that process on the outside, just easing off the pressure. Just like so. And what I'll do is just get a clean cloth and just take any of that slurry off there. Two reasons, I wanna be able to see the edge, make sure that I've got no sort of flat spot on that cutting surface. Um, but also I wanna make sure that there's none of that sort of dirty slurry on there because that'll make our, our spoon dirty. So you can see we've got that real high polish on there and I can see down the cutting edge, there's no light bouncing off the actual cutting edge itself, so I know that it's pretty much sharp, and I just test it with my 
and my thumb most like so and it's just got a nice bit of bite so it's got that nice shine on there but really the only way to really test whether you've got a really good edge on your crook knife is to try it in some wood so i've got a nice piece of fresh willow that we cut out of the hedge this year from doing a bit of hedge laying you get lots of spoon wood and what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and draw this crook through the wood and what you want to try and get it to do is to bite obviously but we want to try and get that nice smooth sweeping cut through the material and i get one shaving from one side right through to the next and quite often a good way to actually check the level of sharpness is to see what the kind of level of finish on the wood itself is so you can check the wood to see if there's any lines or nicks actually in that that sort of carved area of the wood that you've carved on and if you've got any tram lines sort of staying behind in the piece of timber you know that you've got a few nicks that you need to work on that's feeling pretty pretty nice actually getting a nice clean cut and quite a satisfying sound you get these lovely little curly shavings coming off so that's that's what you're aiming for really so pretty much that's as sharp as you want your crook knife to be now obviously if you've been using wet wood prevention is half the battle really so these are made from carbon steel to, uh, tool steel so what we need to do is make sure that you keep that lovely shiny edge so whenever you've used your crook knife make sure that you put a little bit of oil on there it doesn't matter what you use you could use a bit of wd-40 you could use a bit of three and one we really like to use this camellia oil comes in a very handy applicator it's got no cfc's in there but also that's food safe so obviously if you're making spoons and using them for heating from then you haven't got to worry about any horrible petrochemicals going on your on your woodenware really so protective layer of oil and then we can just put that protective wrap on there that'll keep you safe keep the tool safe so you next time you come to use your crook knife when you're out carving a spoon you know that it's razor sharp and in tip top condition really so there you go all happily wrapped up and it can go back with its friends in the in the tool roll so that's what we've been working on this wednesday hopefully you've got a few tips there so that you can keep your carving tools nice and sharp if you've got any questions remember to just drop us a line whether it be an email or if you want to notify us through any of our platforms if you're not following us on instagram make sure that you check us out on instagram as well I'm Craft Lab Knives on there and Lois is Craft Lab Leather. So hope you're enjoying this bit of weird spring weather. We've got sunshine and we've had massive hailstorms today. So yeah, get outside and enjoy it. But uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. <laughs>